It's a really cool game. This game is like, it's it's like how to TVZ. It's so amazingly good. I'm totally stoked to have this replay. It's a game between Sh Clarity Shuttle and Stefano. I it's probably played on ladder, I would guess, but I'm not sure. Um, totally sick game. It was it was really funny. I was kind of talking on my stream about TVZ, and I was talking about how I have trouble with creep spread and overlord spread. And I was telling Force Water that I wanted to build, or I was telling my stream that I wanted to build where Terran opened up three orbital and dealt with creep spread and overlord spread. And so I was telling this to my stream, and Force Water linked me this replay, and it's like everything I could ever ask for in a TVZ game. Um, Shuttle does a safe command center first opening, which I really like. Reaper openings are fine and good, but against good players, the Reaper won't usually accomplish that much. So, uh, shuttle opens command center first on the high ground. Um, I like this. I've been doing this build for the last couple days, actually, up until I got this replay, and this seeing this just solidified my uh, liking of this build. So he scouts kind of after his barracks finishes, and I scout after I start my barracks. I scout a bit earlier. Um, and I'll just, just mention that you can put this command center on the low ground, but having the CC on the high ground keeps you safe against pool first because zerging rushes arrive and you already have a wall up so you have time to build a lot more scvs potentially finish your barracks and just repair it and the zerglings can't even get in and one base roach rushes and and baneling all ins can be dealt with because your factory gets out in time so it's a safe build um, now, it has drawbacks. It doesn't apply any pressure. If Zerg sees a command center first, they can three hatch before pool if they want. Um, okay, so I'll look at this replay from Shuttle's perspective. That's how I like to go over replays. Um, his SCV got killed by Zerglings. So for that reason, I really don't like his scout timing. I like to scout earlier, and uh, Shuttle makes an absolutely fascinating decision here to me. And it's it's very subtle, but it's something I would never do. Um, he sends out another SCV scout, and to me that's just insane uh, because. Like, okay, let's break this down. Like, it might not get into the base. Um, if he walks past an overlord, like, if it's right here, there's always an overlord right here. Uh, it'll just get seen and killed on the way. He's, he's not doing a build that he can really react aggressively with if he scouts droning. Um... So I guess the thing he's looking for is like maybe an early Roach Warren or something like that. But to me, I don't like it. I just, that's like 5% of your economy or less when you consider mules and everything. But uh, it's just, it's just really interesting when a player that's way better than me does something that I wouldn't do. It's worth thinking about, you know? Like, I would never do this, but he's number three on NA ladder. You know, he's... Like, especially versus a guy like Stefano. Like, Stefano's so good. I feel like 
when you when I play against a player like that, I have to cut every corner I can to even have hope to have a chance. Okay, so anyway, he sends out this SCV scout and he narrowly misses this overlord. But to me that's really interesting. So six lings get denied at the wall. And he starts the third command center before Hellions. Very normal stuff. Um, very, very normal. And it's worth noting that the Hellions actually start faster off of command center first than they do off of Barracks command center. Add on. I believe. I'm like 90% sure about that. Could be wrong. So he totally scouts. Like, he scouts for a third base at this location. Um, he sees drones. I don't know what he expected to see with that, but it's really interesting. It's just one of those things. I'm like, hmm, I'm not really sure what that was, what the thinking was there. Okay, so this opening has become the standard in TVZ. Not not this particular, let's say, the command center first part. Um, Reaper openings are popular. One barracks expand is still pretty popular. But going three early orbital command and uh, reactor hellions and uh, early stim. And basically, to keep up with Zerg's economy, Terran needs to play with a third early orbital. Um... For a long time, two base timing pressure builds were really, really popular. Back in Wings of Liberty, IMMVP had a had a pretty he had this opening he used to do a lot, and it it was trending for a while where he would open Reactor Hellion, build some Hellions for map control and harassment, and then and then use the factory to build add-ons, and he would go for like a Marine Hellion medevac timing push where he would like have the hellions on the low ground and lift everything into the main and basically that push still exists but it's not quite as aggressive terrans do it to kill creep and maybe to deny a greedy third but like it's kind of been proven that zerg can defend that push and it becomes all in very quickly because uh by the 9 minute mark, Zerg is going to have a saturated third. And if Terran hasn't started their third command center, Terran's way behind. So anyway, uh, this 3 orbital is becoming pretty much the, the most mainstream TVZ opener. And it's an economic build, but I wouldn't even call it greedy. I wouldn't look at this and say, Zerg should punish this. Um, if you put the third command center at the third, that's pretty greedy, but as is, I don't believe there are any Zerg all-ins that will consistently kill you when you do this. And I've talked to some Zergs about this, who have kind of said, it's not really fair, Terran can do this and they can't bust it, but, well that's true, Zerg can just play economically. One moment.
Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Where was I? Okay. I was taught I went through the the opening, looked at the build order. Sterling, what happened with the spider? I trapped it in a cup and I took it outside. Um Yeah, from there on out it's his adventure. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. So, yeah, basically Terrans, Terrans are playing this, this three orbital every game, and it's pretty hard to punish. Usually, I incorporate an early bunker. Shuttle didn't do it this game. Okay. Um, just on two gas. Oh, his second gas timing is something I do kind of want to look at. Because that's something that, like, you take for granted when you look at a replay, but when then when you're actually playing, it really sucks if you don't have the gas that you need, or if you have too much gas. It just really sucks. Um, so, he's going to build Hellions, he's going to add a couple barracks, so he needs gas for, like, Stim, and then some Widow Mines, and then plus one, plus one when he does eventually get that. And it's worth noting, I've already seen this replay. So, okay, he takes his gas right after his third command center and before he starts his Hellions. Makes sense. All right, moving forward. His first Hellions take over both watchtowers. A little ling run by, and that's why I, I like to have a bunker. Okay, so he he does check both towers. I like that. And then he goes to the third. I think that's correct. Checking the third, and then he'll come check the natural and see, look for roaches or whatever. So if this were me, I would come around this way and start denying this creep. Let's look at what he's doing at home. So he's added two barracks and then two engineering bays. He still hasn't taken his additional gases. So what this signifies to me is that he's going to be active with his units before 2-2. If you want to do a streamlined 2-2 timing, you can get these eBays faster. Yeah, I'm doing a replay review of Shuttle versus Stefano on Belshir. So he he adds these two barracks. I but let's see when he does that. I because I I missed that. I was watching the Hellions, but he goes. He adds two barracks. Our SCVs are under let's attack. see. So it looks a little inefficient. I feel like the timing I would do is get the orbital and then get Hellions 3 and 4. Oh, never mind. He already has them. So, yeah, okay, sure. It all works out. So you get Barracks and then he gets Widow Mines and then Engineering Bays. Complete. So he doesn't float his third right away. He floats it when he scouts Zerg's third. That seems reasonable. So this is actually a really interesting choice. And I think this is partially map dependent. But he went for four Hellions and then he started Widowmine production. And I've been playing with this ever since I found this replay. And it's worked out pretty well for me. Widow Mines have the potential to give you really good advantage, even more so than Hellions. Um, especially against a good player. Good players aren't going to let you kill a bunch of Lings with Hellions. But Widow Mines can catch anybody off guard. So he begins his starport. 
Operation will supply depots. Be quiet. And then takes his third and fourth gas. So anyway, up to this point, everything has been pretty normal. Nothing too outstanding. But the two things he does in this early mid-game that I absolutely love are the early Viking and the 1-1 one -one timing where he uh, kills Creep. Yeah, taking the third is perfectly safe because he scouted Zerg, is on three bases. These Widow Mines killed an Overlord. Add on complete. complete. Back at home, he's got 1-1 one -one on the way. He's still making Widow Mines. And this factory never comes off of this reactor. And he gets an early Viking. I really like this. And this is what TVZ is all about in my mind. Denying creep and... Just, just constricting Zerg. Terran has all sorts of useful harassment opportunities, but... If Zerg can see them coming, they're not very effective. So, the Viking goes and kills Overlords. These Widow Mines are giving Terran map presence. And kills. They just have kills. 9-1-1. One, one. Okay, so he goes up to 5 barracks. And he makes 2 reactors on the 4th and 5th barracks. One one is nearing completion, and he's he's building an army, pretty normal stuff. He's on four gases. He leaves these geysers open for quite some time, and that seems fine, because he only needs gas at this point for two two. Medivacs and widow mines, that's it. That's all he needs gas for. He's only making marines. And there's nothing else to build. Like, what are you going to build? Factories? So far, so normal. But this is where Shuttle really starts to shine, I think. His first two medevacs come out. And he, he pushes out really aggressively. He's got 1-1 one, one finished. And he kills a bunch of creep. And it looks so easy when he does this. But believe me when I tell you, it's easier it's easier said than done. Um, this timing is absolutely perfect. Because Mutalisks are not going to be out yet. He can pick up almost his entire army and fly away with these first two medevacs and he's got 1-1 one, one. so he starts 2-2 two, two. he still hasn't taken a fourth base um, so he's gonna be playing like a pretty normal aggressive TVZ mid game and He's got good macro. When I play, I'll get supply blocked and my money will skyrocket to 1200 and I'll throw down like five more barracks and it just is kind of silly. But he doesn't get supply blocked all the time so he's got a much bigger army and much more efficient spending. So that pathway is so cool. Like he just, he moved out like, just swooped around the map and killed a bunch of creep. Didn't even attack. He just killed a bunch of creep. Now Stefano has to get his queens back out here. He's, he might be missing injects to get this creep started again. Really sick stuff. Still just powering. Just powering units. He's got, like... 63 SCVs, and he's making a few more. Uh, 
I could talk about this turret placement in depth, but I'm not going to. It's not uber important. Okay, so... If it were me playing, I would wait for 2-2 before attacking a base. But... Shuttle mobilizes... Like, he's been powering really, really hard. So, he's mobilizing... And he's got a good count of Widow Mines. And, like, there's not too much else to talk about, but he's got a really good drop. Like, he's going to drop this base and push this base. And this is about the furthest distance from his push possible. Maybe over here. But it's just, it just really smart. I've talked about this countless times on my stream, but... You drop far and you push close. So, just really, really good play. Your forces are under attack. Great Widow Mine placement. Still no fourth. He's got a second factory on the way. Okay, well I really like this. So he does this push. He gets some great Widow Mine shots. And denies the fourth. And the drop gets in and does damage. <laughs> like this drop. Is sort of meant to be a sacrifice. Just to take out this base. But he takes out the base. And does damage with this drop. I don't know if he actually kills the pool. But he killed some drones. And then. He knows where, where Zerg's army is. So he doesn't have enough to engage here, obviously, without the Widow Mines. But he knows where Zerg's army is, so he pushes in and kills Creep. Like, that's so good. That's so good, and it's so hard to do. Like, what the fuck? I, <laughs> I'm... It's astonishing play. Like, it looks easy in a replay, but it's incredibly hard to, to do all this. Well macroing. And he gets out. Starts his fourth. Upgrade. I would like to see some of this creep cleaned up. Some of these tumors. Okay. So... From this point out, I times eight... I just exited the replay, but it looks to me like Shuttle knows Stefano doesn't have this base, so he's going to drop the main and just push everything else this way, because he can assume Stefano has this base. Like Stefano has to have this base, if not, Shuttle's just in an has a huge economic advantage. So, he's dropping over here, and of course, he cleared overlords out. He knows that there's no overlords up here. And that's absolutely huge. Yeah, sweet. So he drops and pushes. Really good stuff. And Stefano, obviously, is an amazing player. He's got ultra tech out at 530. Like... No easy feat right there. And Stefano cleans this up very nicely, but his main is going to be vulnerable. A little bit of miss micro here. So Stefano probably, or shuttle targets the pool, I assume. Kills some drones and gets out. And I think he's just going to recycle this strategy and mass up another army at home, drop the main, and push the fourth. That seems to be the correct way to attack from here on out. Um, he'll probably take both of these bases because he's he's got the money to do so. And 3-3 should be on the way. So macro-wise... No upgrades at the armory. He's getting drilling claws. 
and he's added a couple barracks, but not very many. Um, these Korean Terrans have such good mechanics that they can they can play off of of less production structures. That's something that goes back to Brood War, even. Like, uh, the best players would rely on having very few structures, but they would macro so well that they could keep their money down. The Drilling Clause reduces the time it takes for Widow Mines to burrow. Research. Mineral yield depleted. Ready for dust off. This better be good. This seems like a kind of a half-assed push because there's no medevac and this army couldn't take out two ultralisks. But nonetheless, like, he's getting ahead on economy. His fourth base is finishing at the same time as the Zergs. So far, no tanks, no Thors, no Hellbats. He's just playing Marine Marauder Medivac Widow Mine. And I like it. I like it. I think that's good. Yeah, like, creep is one of those things that will win Zerg the game. It has inevitability um, if you don't deal with it. But if you deal with it, it's really hard for Zerg to start spreading creep again. You know, at 18 minutes in the game, when Zerg has to deal with all sorts of attacks and drops and micro and macro, it's really hard for Zerg to put down creep tumors and, like, here, you know, it almost feels hopeless. So it's something that you kind of only have to deal with once, and then it's it's dealt with. So Clarity Shuttle is on four base against four base, which favors Terran. You can look at the income tab and see that, like, Terran just has much higher income. And he's doing the same cycle that I've been talking about all game long, where he'll he'll drop the far location and push the close location. And every single time he's done this, he's he's gotten in and dealt damage with one or the other. Um, the way Zerg can deal with this is static defense helps a lot. Spines and spores, but some Zergs don't like to do that. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see that these very fundamental attack patterns being used at such a high level. I know if I played Stefano, it would feel like I was swimming with my clothes on in water or something if I was doing drops because they just wouldn't work. They would be like just like a half a punch and he would deflect it and then kill me with ultralisks. But that's just because his mechanics are so much better than mine that I'm just handicapped playing against a player that good. Um, like, if you're evenly matched with your opponent, these attack patterns will work. And if you're better than your opponent, they'll feel unfair. It's just kind of one of those things, I guess. So, once you get to this point in the late game, all sort of planning goes out the window. All sort of planning. Like, it just becomes a slugfest. Um,
the, I really like these types of TVZs where there are a lot of battles happening and there's a lot of a lot of small decision making required. I feel like the better player will win almost every game in these long TVZs. So a shuttle ends up taking this base. Add some command centers. Finally just adds more barracks at the 23 minute mark. And a ghost academy. And he got two eBay upgrades. What did he get? Probably building armor and the planetary range upgrade. Okay. So he's burning SCVs. And he's going to use these extra command centers for mules. Oh man, he makes it look so easy, but it's really not. I mean, he's got he's got 370 APM. So, games like this, where both players essentially have claim on half the mineral patches on the map, um, they come down to efficiency. Like, they, they come down to, like, simple, like, just resource efficiency. So, spellcasters become very strong infestors ghosts ravens swarm hosts broodlords things that can deal damage for free become really really strong um because shuttle is never going to mine from this base and assuming neither player just dies uh all the mineral patches are going to get mined out it never really plays out that way but that's what happens in theory so like it, it all comes down to efficiency so attacks like this are really bad for stefano because he has to rebuild these ultras they cost him money and having that bank is actually pretty important widow mines are actually another great terran spell that deal damage without costing terran money And medevacs. Medevac healing. So eventually, I'm sure Stefano does take this base. So, um, Shuttle is doing exactly what I said. He's adding ghosts. Probably more to counter infestors than to, to uh, do it, like nukes or something like that. But I think without ghosts, infestors would would be really, really strong. How many infestors does Stefano have, actually? Only two. Yeah, so, so, like, Shuttle isn't really attacking this base at this point. He's just trying to get favorable battles. Um, pretty much, the player in this situation who overcommits to an attack will probably lose. So, it almost becomes like like League of Legends, where both players are sort of dancing, but neither one can actually commit. Whoever, like, attacks in first yeah, loses. But it's ra it's a razor's edge thing. One, one slip, and this army can just kill him. 
So we got some drops going, sniping some tech. Very nice. Got a couple Thors. Eventually, I think he'll add star ports for ravens. Okay, so he sees Broodlords, and I think this is where he adds star ports in the back of his base. Mineral field depleted. Against Ultras, having some Thors in your army is really, really good because you can sit your bio behind them and they tank a bunch of damage from the Thors. Like so. This is very effective. Okay, so he does add star ports. This game is just insane. Upgrade complete. Mineral field Stefano, by the way, is without a doubt the best non-Korean Zerg in the world. And arguably one of the best Zergs in the world. Mineral field Yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty ridiculous game. Upgrade complete. Ghost Our SCVs are under attack. I mean, literally the map is becoming mined out. There's like 24 mineral patches left. Yep, just insane. Your forces are under attack. Our SCVs are under attack. I think this is probably the best TVZ game I've ever seen. Like, it rivals Jock G. Lenok in the GSL finals.